Welcome to our service of evening prayer. As we begin, let's hear these words of scripture. I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times, humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, 
We have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that we may turn from our wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips.
The first lesson is from the book of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephath. All those from Sheba shall come, they shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister to you. They shall be acceptable on my altar, and I will glorify my glorious house. Who are these that fly like a cloud, and like doves to their windows? For the coastlands shall wait for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your children from far away, their silver and gold with them. For the name of the Lord your God, and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. Foreigners shall build up your walls, and their king shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you down, but in my favour I have had mercy on you. Your gates shall always be open, day and night they shall not be shut, so that nations shall bring you their wealth, with their kings led in procession. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish, those nations shall be utterly laid waste. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the plain and the pine, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will glorify where my feet rest. The descendants of those who oppress you shall come bending low to you, and all who despised you shall bow down at your feet. They shall call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Here ends the first lesson.
The second lesson is taken from the book of Revelation. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. You have a name for being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is at the point of death. For I have not found your works perfect in the sight of my God. Remember then what you received and heard, obey it and repent. If you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. Yet you have still a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. If you conquer, you will be clothed like them in white robes, and I will not blot your name out of the book of life. I will confess your name before my Father and before his angels. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of the Holy One, the True One, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, who shuts and no one opens. I know your works. Look, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not, but are lying, I will make them come and bow down before your feet, and they will learn that I have loved you. Because you have kept my word of patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I am coming soon. Hold fast to what you have, so that no one may seize your crown. If you conquer, I will make you a pillar of the temple of my God, you will never go out of it. I will write on you the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down from my God out of heaven, and my own new name. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Here ends the second lesson.
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endure thy ministers with righteousness. Our collect prayers beginning with the collect prayer for this week. Let us pray. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful people, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest, and desirest that which thou dost promise, so that, amongst the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and in thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We come to our prayers of intercessions. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we are taught by thy holy word that the hearts of kings are in thy rule and governance, and that thou dost dispose and turn them as it seemeth best to thy godly wisdom. We humbly beseech thee so to dispose and govern the heart of Elizabeth, thy servant, our queen and governor, that in all her thoughts, words and works, she may ever seek thy honour and glory, and study to preserve thy people committed to her charge in wealth, 
peace and godliness. Grant there, so merciful Father, for thy dear Son's sake, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless all the royal family, endue them with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, send down upon our bishops, priests and deacons, and all congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our Mediator and Advocate, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue to pray for the world in which we live, for all those who are suffering with the global pandemic, for those especially in India. We pray that governments from around the world may seek to work together so that the poor and rich alike may receive the vaccinations that are necessary to protect them from COVID-19. We pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the world, all those who worship Jesus and seek to follow him as their Lord and Saviour. We pray for those who have to meet in secret. We pray that God will continue to protect them. We pray for those who seek to alleviate the suffering of others in God's world. For those who seek to bring peace where there is conflict. Those who walk towards danger whilst others are running from it. For those who are made homeless. For those who have no country to call their own. For those separated from family and loved ones. We pray for the communities in which we live. For those people that we are close to, we thank God for them. For the people that we work alongside. For those people who we find difficult. We pray that God would open our eyes to see his image in them. That we may seek to love them as God loves them. And we pray for all who work in our community, for those in education, those in healthcare, those in the justice system, those in local government. And we pray that we would do our part in spreading the good news of God's love in our community. And we pray for ourselves, for the week that is drawing to a close, for the week that is ahead of us, for those plans that we have made, the people that we will see, the conversations that we will have. And we pray that in all things we may witness to God's love. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and us promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen.
whenever I come to read the opening chapters of Revelation as we do in our second reading this evening. It always leads me to ask the question, what would the Spirit write to this church, to my church, to, to Holy Trinity right now? Those letters, the seven letters of the Spirit to the churches in, that we find in the Revelation of John, are written to specific churches in specific places at a particular time with individual particular people and situations and problems and highs and lows just like we are in our congregation at a particular time in our life and as the church is a particular time in history with the continuing pandemic at this time and looking to come out of the pandemic especially here in Great Britain um, and how do we do that what is the church's response how do we continue to be the church what would be the letter that the spirit writes to this church in this place in this time I guess the first question that we need to ask is how would we respond um, if we were to receive that letter looking at the envelope with the postmark sent from the Spirit of God would we open it in the same way that we might open a letter and that's marked from the taxman or would we open it in the way that we would open a letter from a loved one from um, a card or a, a birthday card and from someone that we loved hearing from and hadn't spoken to maybe for a while but a, a letter from a loved one what is our what are our thoughts what are our responses to say that the spirit of god is communicating with this church now because actually it isn't like an ofsted inspection in a school it is the spirit of our heavenly father the spirit of god communing with us out of a place of love and forgiveness and grace that we might better be the people that he calls us to be that we might better be the church that he calls us to be in this place and in this time so we need to think as individuals and as a church what is it that has been good what is it that has been good before covid and lockdown that we are looking forward to returning to that which blesses us in our soul that which moves us forward in our discipleship that which brings us grace and forgiveness and blessing what is it that is good that we have experienced in this time of disruption new things such as putting the services online this very service you know, what has been good about the things that we have done what are the things that we should be continuing even in normal times however you now describe that phrase what is it that we continue from this time of disruption what has blessed us what has blessed other people what has enabled the church to reach out more what has enabled the church to communicate better what has enabled the church to show God's love more and more what has been good in this time that we continue and also being honest what is it that maybe is time to bring to an end or what is it that we had got used to doing that brings no blessing to god or to us what is it in our worship what is it in our church life what is it in our structures that gets in the way of us being the church God calls us to be. These are all big, big questions and questions that we will be looking at and thinking about and being encouraged 
to prayerfully look at over the next weeks and months as we find that new equilibrium, that new normal, um, as we hopefully come out of lockdown for the last time and seek to build on what we have. But it is as a starting point that we look to God. The starting point is to seek to hear God's Spirit calling us, communicating with us, giving us instructions and directions. That is our starting point in all things. So I want us to, to take time to look around, to think about how life has been and how life is and how life might be as a church and to ask that question, what is God's Spirit saying to us? What is God's Spirit saying to me? And together we will seek to, to read that letter to hear the words of God spoken to us, that we might truly become more the people that he is calling us to be, that we might truly become the church that he is calling us to be. And this will be done in conjunction with the other two churches in our parish. We are working closer together and I believe it is right that we should work closer together. And so all this will be thrown into that, that melting pot of what it means to be the parish of Horsham. What it means to be Holy Trinity Church in the parish of Horsham. And what it means to be you as an individual following Christ in the plan that Christ has for your life. I want to encourage us as we move forward. I want to warn us, alert us, that there will be changes ahead, but I want to reassure us that all that will be done will be from a starting point of seeking to hear God and his voice and his direction. So please do pray, please do seek to hear God's call on your life. Please do seek to hear what the Spirit is saying to this church in this time, in this place.
Our final prayer and blessing. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.